The information presented on this program is not intended to take the place of your personal physician's advice, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Discuss this information with your own physician or health care provider to determine what is right for you. This hour of Dr. Joe, sponsored by VITAS. Learn more at bringhospicehome.com. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. What a surprise. Usually not a time that I'm on the air, but uh, my boss, Shaney B., called me up and said, hey, can you do Sunday from 12 to 2? And when the boss says something, you, your answer is what? Absolutely, yes. So I said, yes, absolutely. So glad you're here. Uh, if you've never listened to my shows, welcome. Glad you could join us. I'm usually on from 7 to 9 on WSB, and I'm on my sister stations on Sunday mornings as well, B98 and 971 The River. And so today we're here live, and uh, we're going to be taking uh, calls. If you have any healthcare questions, you can give us a call at 404 uh, 872 uh, or 1 800 WSB Talk. And so we're going to call this show. I, I said, we've got to come up with a name for my new show. So we're going to call it Dr. Joe's Healthy Week in Review. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover what came up in healthcare this week and discuss it and any healthcare questions you have, not necessarily pertaining to what we're talking about, uh, but any healthcare questions of uh, 1-800-WSB-TALK or 404 872 And so let's jump into this. It's kind of exciting. This was funny. I, I, as, as I go through the articles, I, I, I read it and I think, uh, well, Captain Obvious must have wrote this article. And this one was, processed foods like bread may raise your risk of cancer. And I thought, wow, somebody paid research money to find this out. Well, we know that already. We know that these things are bad. But let's talk about the new research because if you don't know the research is out there, can't help you. New study shows that people who ate more highly processed foods, such as chicken nuggets and instant noodles, have a higher risk of cancer. Now, it's been known for a long time that you need to eat things like fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, if you want to lower your risk of cancer. And obesity also raises your risk of cancer. And junk food is full of calories, which can make you overweight. Now, full disclosure, I used to be fat. So if I mention anything about being overweight, because again, this isn't, you know, this is my, isn't my usual audience who knows uh, my background. I used to be overweight when I was a kid. I was about 10, 11 years old. And I, there's a picture. In fact, my mother just found it. I was so happy I found this picture because it's uh, the picture that changed my life. It was a picture of me in a bathing suit. And my fat rolls were hanging over the top of the bathing suit. And I, again, young kid. And I, and I remember seeing that picture. And I couldn't run and play with my cousins, my cousins, Johnny, Pauly, and Mikey. And they, would, they were real thin and real fast and real athletic, and I just couldn't keep up with them. So I finally just got frustrated and said, I'm done. That's it. I'm not going to do this anymore. And I decided it's time to lose weight. And what I did, which was interesting, didn't realize why it was so powerful, started drinking a lot of water before every meal. And my logic was this. If you drink a lot of water, it's going to fill up my stomach. If my stomach's filled up, I can't put food in there. And it worked. Little did I know it wasn't the water that was filling me up. But there's a part of your brain uh, when you're an infant that controls hunger and a part of your brain that controls thirst. And that's why if you've ever had an infant, they're always thirsty. I want to drink, I want to drink, I want to drink. Sippy cups everywhere. And then as you get older, you start to lose your thirst. Well, it's not that you're losing your thirst. It's that those two parts of the brain grow together. So many times when you're hungry, you're not hungry, you're thirsty. And so one of the tricks you can do to help lose weight, which will help you stop eating junk food, which will then lower your risk of cancer, is drink more water. It's just that simple. And most people don't drink enough water. So how much water do you drink? Well, when you pee, it should be clear. And I have patients do this. I'll say, listen, if you think there's an issue, next time you have to go to the bathroom, use a clear glass cup, fill it up, and hold it up to the light. It should be relatively clear, maybe a few things floating around in there, but not a lot. And if you have a lot floating around in there, that could be protein in the urine, and that could be a sign of kidney problems. Now, again, this is a very vague test. It's not very, it's not as scientific as we can do in a doctor's office, but it's a good little test you can do. It also shouldn't have an odor to it. If it has an odor to it, it could be problems as well. But I digress from my research here. Study conducted by a team of French and Brazilian researchers suggests that ultra-processed foods carry an extra risk of cancer above and beyond being nutritionally bad for you. So the, when I read this, I thought, okay, junk food is not good for you. They're specifically talking about something called ultra-processed foods. Now, ultra-processed foods, uh, it, it, intaking it is associated with higher risk of overall cancer. This is according to the British uh, Medical Journal uh, published. 
uh, published online. Okay, 10% increase in the proportion of ultra-processed foods in the diet was associated with significant uh, risk of 10% or more of overall cancer and specifically breast cancer. So what the heck is an ultra-processed food? Things like mass-produced breads and baked goods, sodas, sweet drinks, instant noodles, savory package snacks, industrial confections, which are what? P pastries and candies and donuts, uh, meatballs, chicken and fish nuggets, reconstituted meat. Many times, if you're eating cold cuts, they have nitrates in them. And the nitrites are carcinogenic. Frozen or shelf-stable ready meals, other foods prepared or mostly or entirely of sugars, fats, and oils. So what I just did was I listed most people's diets, didn't I? And that's not a good thing. Now, if you're just joining us, I am Dr. Joe Esposito, and my background is I'm board certified in chiropractic, I'm board certified in orthopedics, I'm board certified in pain management, double board certified in nutrition, BS in nutrition, retired dietitian, award-winning author, and my radio shows that we do on Sunday nights here on WSB are heard coast to coast and around the world. So after 33 years of practice and all those degrees and all that research, the information we're giving you is healthcare that really, really works. I'm not against drugs. I'm not against surgery. I'm not against the ordinary healthcare system. I'm against some of the things we're doing in the system that aren't working. And don't get me started on insurance, of course, which is a total, mm, drives me nuts. But you have control of your health. That's what I'm, I'm getting at here. You have control of the things you put in your body. You can decide what I'm going to eat. And that's the key, because when you take control of your own health, you then can steer the ship. If you're not doing that, you're going to have somebody else steer the ship. And in today's healthcare market, it's not like it used to be. I'm telling you, because after 33 years of practice, when I talk to my fellow doctors, medical, uh, chiropractic, orthopedic, neurology, uh, neurosurgeon, vascular surgeon, psychiatrists, it doesn't matter the field. Nobody in the field is happy with the way things are going. We're working a lot harder, having to see a lot more patients for a lot less income and a lot more paperwork. And that's the key. The paperwork is insane. It makes no sense either. It doesn't mean anything. Well, fill this out. Why didn't you fill this out? How come this wasn't filled out? You missed this line here. It has nothing to do with your health care. Well, we're trying to create standards in healthcare. You are not. What you're trying to do is create so much paperwork so that doctors say, you know what? I don't want to take insurance anymore. It's way too much work. And there are some companies where it actually costs us to see the patient if they have that insurance. So people call up and say, you in network? I said, well, we can't afford to be in network. We're losing money just being in your network. And so you need to take control of your own health. That's the key. And you have control of what you eat. That's the cool part. Nobody is force feeding you junk food. People are giving you good, healthy foods or bad foods. You can decide the good, healthy foods are a whole lot cheaper. Yes, they are. I'll explain that. They're cheaper, they're easier, uh, doesn't stink up the kitchen, uh, they're better for you, you can increase your life expectancy on average. If you just gave up one food, chances are you'd increase your life expectancy by eight years. Wouldn't that be cool? Would you be willing to give up one food if you could statistically increase your life expectancy by eight years? Quality years. I bet you would. I would. I did. That simple thing is dairy products. Just by giving up dairy products, studies have shown you can increase your life expectancy by eight years. If you uh, give up uh, all animal products, 11 years. Now, I'm not asking you to do that. I'm a vegan. I've been a vegan for, I don't know, 33 years now. I'm not asking you to do that. I'm just asking you to make better choices. And when you see studies like this, you should take note. Researchers stress that the study does not show that highly processed food cause cancer, but people who eat a lot of junk food and other habits that predispose them to cancer uh, kind of go along with it. So there's no direct link here, but they're saying if you eat it, statistically showing you, you're going to increase your risk of cancer. So ultra processed foods have a higher content of total fat, saturated fat, added sugar, added salt, usually low fiber and low vitamin nutrition density. So why wouldn't you want to eat the foods that are going to help you get healthy? And it's real simple. There's four of them. So here's my deal. It's about 100, actually, it's about 120,000 in that four food category. If I was going to give you $120,000, no strings attached, cash money, no taxes, $120,000, I want you to give me seven back. No strings attached. Would you do it? Of course you would. 
Let's, you know, Wes Moss was just on before me. Man, I would love to do that. Wes would be thrilled with that. So if you can do that, why wouldn't you? Well, the seven foods I want you to consider cutting back in your diet, what I call the seven deadly sins of nutrition. Those are alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. I know, that's your whole diet. I know, you don't like me. 120,000 good foods. And in that, four simple ones, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. And all the research, believe me, I've been researching this for 35 years. Now, sometimes they're not as much fun. I'll grant you that. I miss meatball Parmesan sandwiches on Italian bread. But that being said, you can save so much time, so much money, live so much longer statistically, help lose weight, go to the bathroom better, improve your love life, help your mental capacities. Why wouldn't you want to do that? It makes perfect sense to me. Plus, well, got to go to break. If you have a healthcare question, 404-872-0750 or 1-800-WSB-TALK, 404-872-0750. My website, we archive thousands of hours of radio shows on my website, drjoesposito.com, which is Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. And again, I'll be on tonight again from 7 to 9 uh, with another show. We're talking about soy tonight. Probably, uh, it sounds boring, but it's actually very interesting. Folks, well, got to go to a break, 404-872-0750. We'll be right back. Dr. Joe Esposito, the President of the United States of Health. Now on News 95.5 at AM 750 WSB. Hey folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. I know, surprising time for me. Uh, we're, uh, we're calling this Dr. Joe's Healthy Week in Review. Let's start taking some calls. If you have a question, numbers 404-872-0750. David, how can we make your day better? Hey, uh, good afternoon, Dr. Joe. Um, just want to... I guess a comment on, on some of what you said about uh, nutrition. Sure. Um, basically, uh, you know, with your background, you know a heck of a lot about it. Um, what they're doing now in medical schools uh -huh. is they're looking into actually uh, teaching the um, uh, students about nutrition and about how it plays a huge role in a person's health so that when you go to see a doctor, it's not just, uh, this is wrong, here's the prescription, it, it should involve also uh, some nutritional counseling. Absolutely. Now, about, about 20 years ago, what I was doing, I, I actually was a fat kid like you, and I wanted to find out why, and by the time I was about 14 or 15 years old, I realized that the ingredients and, and, and everything that was sourced was, was, was getting pretty awful, and I went more with the agricultural um, uh, education and specifically agronomy, which is soil. Mm -hmm. So once I understood about quality and sourcing of ingredients that were not polluted per se, I realized that people, as, as good as the ingredient is, they don't know how to use it. They don't know how to cook, even though they think they do. Right. Uh -huh. They have Teflon throughout their kitchen. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They have soft aluminum pots and pans. Yep. So, so what I did is I started uh, going to people's homes as like sort okay, of we got about one, one, one minute, David, so go, real quick. Okay. I, I went to their homes. I looked at the ingredients they had. I looked at their cookware. I realized that in this day and age now, people don't have the time or knowledge to make all these great nutritional choices that all you and doctors, you know, purport. So right. that's a big problem is that, the, 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 the final step in having a healthy diet is the one thing that's missing. They can hear everything right. about what they should eat, but if they can't make it part of their daily life. Right. Well, I have a, my first book is called Eating Right for the Health of It, and it covers exactly what you're talking about. Food prep, what to do, stock your pantry, unstock your pantry. Uh, my books are on my website, drjoesposito.com. And also I have a product called Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. And those are two powders, and it's the minimum amount of nutrients that you need uh, for a day. And I have it sitting right here in the studio in front of me. And I think everybody, even, ch even children, after eating solid food, should be doing that. If you want more information on that, Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, a bunch of other supplements I have are on my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, also available on Amazon. Folks, if you have a healthcare question, 404-872-0750. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. We'll be right back.
you think your best years are behind you, you're wrong. Listen to Dr. Joe Esposito every week on WSB. Hey folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. Glad you could spend a little time with me today. Uh, having a good time, actually, filling in. Uh, well, I guess filling in. I don't know what's going to happen here. I think we're experimenting here from 12 to 2. Uh, my usual show on WSB is 7 to 9 on uh, Sunday evening, so hopefully you'll tune in again tonight and catch that show as well. Um, and if you're just a uh, first-time listener, welcome. Uh, again, I'm board-certified chiropractic, orthopedics, pain management, double board-certified in nutrition, BS in nutrition, um, my Sunday night show was heard coast to coast and around the world. Hopefully this one will be soon too. And I just appreciate you calling in with your questions and helping me out because, uh, it's kind of a fun little experiment. I want to cover one thing real quick and then I'm going to start taking calls again. So if you're on hold, please hang on. You're not going to like this one. It's, we're, we're talking at Dr. Joe's Healthy Week in Review and this, uh, came out, um, well, this week or last week, can't remember. The most potent phytoestrogen is in beer. Now you're thinking to yourself, I heard beer but I don't know what phytoestrogens are. You ever wonder this? Why do alcoholic men develop things like man boobs and other feminine traits? Well, we know that things like estrogens produce a feminization. It actually kind of takes away some of your masculine traits, gives you more feminine traits. And our liver clears estrogen from the body. So you put estrogen compounds in your body, your liver, if it's healthy, is going to break them down and pass them out. So the original theory was alcohol-induced liver damage led to the retention of excess estrogens. Well, that made sense. The liver wasn't able to flush the estrogens out, and so that created a problem. And so we thought that's why people that drank a lot became more feminized. The problem was that they were measuring estrogen levels, but they weren't elevated. So now we had a problem. Wait a minute. If the estrogen levels, if the liver isn't breaking it down, it should be higher. And even those with cirrhosis of the liver, men appear to clear the estrogens from the body normally. But the problem was, too, that men's testicles started shrinking even before they started to develop, develop liver damage. And this comes from drinking excess alcohol. So an alternative explanation, we said, well, it's, obviously it's not building up estrogen. What could it be? If it's not due to estrogen produced endogenously, meaning inside your body, maybe it's coming from exogenous sources. And phytoestrogens, which are plant, phyto means plant estrogens in the plants uh, that alcoholic beverages are made from might be the problem. So the discovery that plants contain hormonal compounds goes back to 1951. There were Australian chemists who found out uh, that they had a problem with sheep. And the sheep, they had infertility in sheep, and it was ravaging the nation's wool industry. They just couldn't make babies anymore. So it took them about 10 years to figure it out, but the compound present in the type of clover that the sheep were eating, called genistin, is the same phytoestrogen that's found in things like soybeans. Now, I'm going to be talking about soy tonight on my show from 7 to 9, so set your clock and make sure you tune in. You can read about this dreaded uh, disease, if you want to call it that, that happened online. You can read it online. that happened in Australia. So the sheep were eating a lot of clover, so you're thinking to yourself, now, wait a minute, if this genistin is causing a problem, maybe I shouldn't eat anything with genistin in it. But you'd have to drink about 1,000 cartons of soy milk a day eat about 8,000 soy burgers or about 800 pounds of tofu a day to get this concentration that these sheep were getting from eating the clover. So what do we do? We're back to the drawing board again. 1999, we found a chemical, a phytoestrogen called 8PN. It was discovered in hops. Here comes the beer part. Most potent phytoestrogen found to date. It's 50 times more potent than the estrogens found in soy. So here you are, gentlemen, and I get this question a lot. They're worried about you know, I can't eat soy, doc. It's going to lower my testosterone and raise my estrogen. If you're drinking beer, guess what? 50 times more powerful. Now we have machines that pick the hop. So a lot of people don't get exposure to it, but they found that it messed with women's estri- with, with their menstrual cycle if they handled hops, if they were making beer and they handled it by hand. So back in 2001, a study found that hops containing a dietary supplement for breast enhancement raised the concern that other phytoestrogen in hops might be transforming into this more potent phytoestrogen. So they found this, this pill that they were selling that was supposed to help your breasts grow, and they were getting it from hops. So now it's all starting to tie together here. We're starting to see the problem. Study was done on mice, so might have been an issue, might not have been. So it all seemed fine. 2005 comes along. The liver not only trans is not only the transformation site inside the human body, it turns out that the colon can be where these hormones convert into these powerful estrogen-like compounds. 
And so we found that if we started taking stool samples of people, we measured these estrogen compounds in them, people that drank a lot of beer. So what they did is they mixed the hops with colon contents. We'll keep it clean here. And they found that sure enough, there was about a 90% conversion rate. The concentration of the 8PN in beer is considered too low to affect humans. However, when it gets into the colon, it converts and creates a problem. So ladies and gentlemen, as much as I hate to tell you, and you're going to be mad at me when I say this, the more beer you drink, the more phytoestrogens you have, the more the body acts like estrogen and the more you are feminized. So women, it can mess with your ability to make babies. It can mess with your menstrual cycle. It can mess with your hormones. And gentlemen, the same thing. And this is one of the reasons why people that drink a lot of alcohol have problems in the romantic department. It's not just the alcohol that lowers your testosterone. Beer specifically raises your phytoestrogens, which acts like estrogen, which counteracts testosterone. And now we got a problem. So you might think, in fact, last week I did a show on the food romance connection. You might think that you're pretty hot after a few drinks and you get a little loosened up and kind of get sexy. When in reality, from a hormone standpoint, you're destroying your body's ability to function in the romantic realm. Start taking some callers here. Eugenia, how can we make your day better? Uh, my granddaughter had a cold a couple months ago, and yep. now she still has mucus. She's seen her pediatrician, in fact, seen her old one, too. Yep. And she just keeps saying, I'm all, and blowing her nose, and we're getting concerned. I'm concerned about sinusitis, sure. and I'm also concerned about any kind of Western medicine treating her. Yeah, I understand. So, mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so one of the tricks here, um, a lot of people, of course, with cold and flu season this year, it's just been horrific is you have to cut out the foods that produce a lot of mucus. And the two foods I need you to have her cut out, and everyone listening needs cut out, especially Mm -hmm. in this cold and flu season time, is wheat Mm -hmm. and dairy products. All right. Dairy is the number one food allergen. Wheat is the number two food allergen. So right. you need to cut those foods out because those are the things that are producing mucus. Now, when the body's Wait, healthy, there, you got there, it. just okay. cut it out. See what happens. Give it a couple of days. Chances okay. are you're going to be blown away. If I'll not, go to my, I'm not done yet. go to my <laughs> website, <laughs> drjoesposito.com, and okay. we have something called uh, Dr. Joe's Wellness Booster. And uh-huh. what it does is it helps stimulate white blood cell production. It's herbs. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a liquid, and it's an herbal formula. Uh, and I take it every day during cold and flu season. And I, I can't right. remember the last time getting a cold or flu. And what's the name of it again? It's Dr. called Joe? Dr. Joe's Wellness Booster. It's on okay. the website, drjoesposito.com, also available on Amazon. And uh, right. I would try taking that. Uh, I take it. I, I would never go a day without it, especially in cold and flu season, because it stimulates white blood cell, keep your body healthy. And, mm-hmm. um, and then if you do get sick, then we have something called Dr. Joe's Seasonal Tonic, which is ginger, horseradish, cayenne pepper, onion, and garlic, right. which is, tastes, yeah. tastes like it sounds. We're, we're familiar with all this stuff. We've always been nutrition-minded, so Perfect. I, I agree totally with there what you go. you're saying. Not that it would matter if I did or not, but That's right. <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm going to go on the site and look. Now, would the dosage be adjusted accordingly? How old is age? she? How old is she? She's nine. Nah, she's fine. Yeah. She's perfectly fine. She's yep. fine, isn't she? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Good deal. All right, Eugenia, thanks so much for the call. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. All right, let's see here. Jerry, you've been holding for a while. How can we make your day better? Hello, Jerry. Yes, I'm uh, here. Hi. I, I, you said sir, and I thought, no. <laughs> <laughs> I spelled it, so I thought she wouldn't nope. would know it was all a girl. Me and you, Jerry. I'm calling about my son-in-law, who I live with. He's 56, and he's uh, not overweight. He, he's pretty healthy. He doesn't go to the doctor much. You know, he's scared of doctors for some reason. But he has ringing in his ears. And I was wondering if it could be diet or... Yeah, a couple of things with ringing in the ears. Um, Number one, we always look at medication. Of course, aspirin can cause ringing in the ears. So if he's on any medication, you want to always look at the side effects and see if it's a side effect of that. Second thing I find a lot is the atlas, the top bone in the neck, moves out of place. And when it moves out of place, it can actually irritate the auditory nerve. And that can cause that low hum or that ringing in the ears. And I've had a lot of patients over the years, after again, we're chiropractors, putting the bones back in place, uh, getting some great results with that. And then the third thing is, does he have any acid reflux or heartburn, burping, gas, bloating? You don't normally have gas. Okay. No, yeah. he doesn't. Okay, because that could be sometimes the stomach and the vagus nerve are involved if it's a digestive issue. Right. 
he does he does he is a steel worker so i'm inclined to ah. think maybe it's probably that nerve in the neck it, nerve in the neck yes loud noises of course can do it but the nerve in the neck is a real common one and and that's that's the first place i'd look as a chiropractor is check the nerves in the neck okay okay that, that's very good thank you so much Thanks, jerry appreciate the call and, folks, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. Um, so if you ever want to come see us, you can go to our website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. And on the website, we archive hundreds. I think we have well over 1,000 radio shows. So if you like what you're hearing today, go to the website, listen to that. I've, I've, I've had people listen to all of them. And we give you a lot of good information that you can use to get well and stay well. I also videotape my live lectures when I do live lectures. So some people are visual learners. That's uh, also on the website, and you can see that and watch some of the videos. And they're fun because I can show you things I can't show you on the radio because a lot of healthcare is physical, not chemical. I also want you to follow me on Facebook and follow me on Instagram because we send out lots of good information there as well, more good free information for you. Because my team of doctors and I, there's six of us all together, our goal is to help you get well and stay well. And so if we can give you the tools that you need to do, eating right, making sure the digestive system is working, taking the right supplements, uh, things like Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, the Wellness Booster, the Seasonal Tonics. Uh, we have a whole line of supplements we have there. We have a B-complex, and en- digestive enzyme, vitamin D3. Nobody gets enough vitamin D3, almost nobody. Um, and you need to take it with K2. If you've never even heard of K2, it's a vitamin you need. Nitric oxide opens up your blood vessels for brain function, but also as gentlemen and women get older, sometimes we may not be functioning as well as we used to in the romantic department. Very good for opening up your blood supply. Adrenal support, probiotics, all there on the website, my books. If you have questions, you can send them to me through the website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. Got to go to break, folks. Marcus, tell me I got to go to break. If you have a health care question, give us a call, 404-872-0750, 404-872-0750, or 1-800-WSB-TALK. We'll be right back. True independence comes from feeling good and staying out of the doctor's office. Get stronger and healthier with Dr. Joe Esposito on News 95.5 at AM 750 WSB. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. Glad you could spend a little time with us today. Folks, if you're on hold, keep holding. I'm going to get to you. So a couple of you drop off there. If you want to call back, I'll try to get you on. Uh, on, a, on a sad note, uh, if you've listened to the news, you know, Henry County Deputy Chase Maddow was shot and lost his life at Locust Grove last Friday. He left, leaves behind his wife, a young son, and a newborn son born, born earlier this week. And all of us here at WSB offer our condolences. We're very saddened by this news. Uh, WSB's Mark Aram has set up a trust fund for the children of De- Deputy Chase Maddox with the help and oversight of our own Clark Howard. So, folks, this is, this is a big issue here. And, of course, he died in the line of duty protecting us. So if you'd like to make a donation, go to WSBradio.com. There's a link right there on the home page. We'd love for you to donate anything you can, dollar, five dollars, ten dollars. Let's see if we can help out his widow and his family because he died protecting us. We need to help him. So if you're just tuning in, I am Dr. Joe Esposito. Normally I'm, well, I am normally on 7 to 9 on Sunday nights, and I will be on tonight. Promise you we'll be there from 7 to 9. Um, So if you're liking what you're hearing, I want you to tune in tonight as well. And if you like this style of of radio, you can go to my website, drjoesposito.com, and we archive hundreds of hours of radio shows there, videos, video of live lectures. Uh, we do, um, uh, we have my supplements there. If, if you've never taken the supplements, never heard of my supplements, the two supplements I recommend for everyone is Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. They, two powders, they just rock. Uh, it's the minimum amount of nutrients that you need every day to keep your body healthy. And then we usually customize a plan around that, but that's usually the, the core. But we have several other supplements. My books are there, Eating Right for the Health of It, Prescription for Extreme Health, um, if you have questions, send them to me through the website. I'm more than happy to help you in any way I can. And my team of doctors are there because we want to help you get well and stay well. And we want to give you the tools that you need to get well and stay well. And so today we're calling the show Dr. Joe's uh, Healthy Week in Review. And uh, we started taking calls, but I do want to finish up real quickly on this. We talked about beer and how beer is so high in phytoestrogens, and that may be why you get a beer belly. You don't get a vodka belly, you get a beer belly because of the chemicals, the estrogen. So it's not just fat I'm worried about. You're also messing with your body's ability to produce normal hormones, which can affect every aspect of your life. Estrogen is a growth hormone, and if you're not growing taller, chances are you're getting fatter. 
Folks, going to have to go to a break. If you have a question, number here is 404-872-0750 or 1-800-WSB-TALK. Again, my website, drjoesposito.com. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Dr. Joe Esposito on News 95.5 at AM 750 WSB. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. I know, not my usual time, right? Usually 7 to 9 on Sundays. Well, I'll be on tonight, 7 to 9, so make sure you tune in. Uh, but I'm filling in today for, from 12 to 2. Hopefully you're enjoying the show and give you lots of good information because this is the show where we naturally want to get you well and keep you well. See the little play on words, naturally we want to get you well, naturally. See, I, cre- I came up with that. So what we're doing today is we're calling it Dr. Joe's uh, Week in Review, or a healthy, healthy re- Week in Review, uh, discussing topics that are in the news. So, folks, if you're on hold, Lynn, Betsy, please hold on, okay? I'm going to get to you, I promise, uh, but we got to cover some other things as well. So I do appreciate you hanging on like that. I know when you're holding on, it's forever. And if you do have a health care question, folks, the number here is 404-872-0750 or 1-800-WSB-TALK. If you like what you're hearing, you have questions, you want to listen to archive radio shows, just go to my website, drjoesposito.com. Or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world, thanks to you. And you can listen to shows, watch videos of my live lectures, supplements, questions, uh, make appointments, whatever makes you happy. We want to be here for you. Now, this was in, I've talked about this a lot, and it's interesting that it keeps coming up in the news, and it's important to know this. Because if you like honey, anybody like honey? Raise your hands. I, it's nice. It's sweet. Now, you're doing a good job. You're trying to eat right, and people tell me this all the time. I eat right, Dr. Joe. I gave up sugar. I'm eating honey. I'm eating a lot of fresh produce, you know, unprocessed grains and legumes, and I'm really doing a good job. But honey, could honey actually be bad for you? And not the honey itself, but what you think is honey. Many of us use the natural sweetener as an alternative to sugar. It's a favorite ingredient in a lot of drinks and dishes. But there's a problem. If you're like a lot of Americans, you don't know that there's some bad news out there. Turns out most of the honey that you'll find on grocery store shelves is not actually real honey. It's a product of an unethical widespread practice called honey laundering. No kidding. That's what it's called. Let me explain. Honey laundering can mean many different things. But in broad terms, it describes honey that's been altered to contain less of the real product in lieu of cheap Uh, Fillers like water, synthetic sweeteners, and even harmful chemicals without being clearly labeled. Now, natural honey can be expensive, and it's kind of difficult to harvest. you got to realize how many bees are involved to make a little bit of uh, honey. And as a result, a lot of honey producers, including several in China, rely on some unsavory practices to create some cheap knockoffs. So it's not just uh, clothes and shoes that can be a cheap knockoff. Honey can be, and it can actually be dangerous. It's well documented China has been flooding the U.S. market with honey that has all of its good stuff taken out, the beneficial pollen, and they do something called ultrafiltration. And the reason is this. They ultrafilter it because if you can get some pollen in there, you can do a DNA test on the pollen and trace it back where the plants came from. If you ultrafilter it, what you have basically is sugar water. And you can't find out where it came from. So I'm going to cover that a little bit more. So uh, hang on. I do want to take some callers here. Betsy, you've been more than patient. How can we make your day better today? Hello, Betsy. Betsy, Betsy. Oh, Betsy. Betsy. I'm th- sorry. That's you, Betsy. I'm, yes, I'm here. I, I, I didn't understand my name. Okay. How can we help you today? I wanted to ask you about the leg cramps. I don't know what I wake up with in the morning. I can hardly walk. Uh huh. What do you suggest that we do for that? Okay. When it comes to leg cramps, it could be physical, it could be chemical. So let's cover both. Physical okay. is probably very, very common. This is the one we see the most in our offices. Yeah. Is you have a pinched nerve in the low back. Now, the nerves come out of the low back and they control your back, hips, legs, knees, and ankles. Those right. same nerves control your colon, sex organs, and bladder. So now you might see something like gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, urinary problems, sexual problems. Everything from the waist down is controlled by the nerves in the low back. But those nerves also control your muscles. Hmm. So the most common thing that I find, I've been in practice 33 years now as a chiropractor, is pinched nerves in the low back causing the leg cramps. So step number one, I would check your low back. Things that you can do. You want to make sure you're drinking enough water. Because if you dehydrate, those muscles spasm up, and that can be a real serious problem. So if you're not drinking enough water, start pumping the water into the system. 
Then we look at the nutritional com complications. It could be a calcium deficiency, could be a magnesium deficiency. Oh dear. A lot of people are deficient in magnesium because you get magnesium from things like nuts and seeds. And if you're not eating a good plant-based diet, you're probably not getting enough magnesium. Animal products don't contain a lot of magnesium. So, Do you believe in, in magnesium tablets? Sure. If it's necessary, magnesium supplements are great. Now, don't okay. take too much because that's right. what they make milk of magnesia out of, which will give you diarrhea. So right. you certainly don't want that. Um, but you can try adding some nuts into your diet. Walnuts, almonds, pecans, pistachios, not peanuts. And uh, Lynn, mm -hmm. I'm going to get to you with peanuts. So hang on there. Lynn's another caller. It's gonna, peanuts are going to come up in her conversation. Right. Not peanuts. Right. But try that. You can try a magnesium supplement. and certainly not going to hurt you as long as you take the recommended dosage. And so I would check the nerves in the low back. The magnesium would be my next choice. And then calcium might be my next choice. But let's see if those work first. Let's try to narrow it down from there. Okay. And, wa and water. Okay, Betsy? And water. And water. Water. A lot more water. Okay, Betsy? Okay, thank you. I appreciate much. the call. Thanks so much. Lynn, you've been more than patient. How can we make your day better? Uh, yes, I've been suffering from recurring cold sores, like when I go to the dentist or get a cold or just because. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I just want to know what can I do to support my system oh. to stop it. I'm going to be your new best friend after this one, Lynn. Hey. Uh, cold sores, herpes virus, almost everyone. In fact, I don't know anyone who doesn't have herpes virus in their body. There's like over 100 different types. The cold sore you're thinking about is the, you know, the herpes too. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of things you want to do. Number one, you got to cut out all the wheat. Oh, I'm gluten-free. Perfect. All right. So we're good there then. Okay. Second thing is um, things can stimulate these outbreaks and arginine is uh, an amino acid that actually stimulate outbreaks okay. and peanuts are very high in arginine. Oh, no peanuts, huh? No <laughs> peanuts. In fact, usually around Braves season, people call me up and say, Dr. Joe, I went to the Braves game and I had an outbreak. And I was like, well, I don't know what happened at the Braves game, but what do we do at the Braves game? We eat peanuts, maybe a circus. We, it's something we don't do on a regular basis. But I would cut out the peanuts um, and see if that helps because you got to cut out the arginine, which can be causing the outbreaks. Is that like, is it all nuts or is it just pretty much peanuts? Peanuts are the worst. Cashews are the next. Okay. Okay. No okay. Something you can thank do. You. No, I'm not done yet. <laughs> when you have an outbreak, get uh -huh. some plain old baking soda. Okay. Okay. Wet the area, lick your finger, dip it in a baking soda, put it on there and let it dry. You'll okay. be amazed how quickly the baking soda dries it up. Okay. okay. So that's great. And if you do have a circulatory issue, arginine is good for circulation, but I have something called Dr. Joe's nitric oxide support. It's a, a supplement and we, we use um, citrulline, which doesn't cause the herpes outbreak. So some people take arginine to help lower their blood pressure. Citrulline would work without giving you the outbreaks. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks, Lynn. Appreciate your call. Uh, let's keep taking questions. Go ahead. Oh, oh, how are we doing on time? Oh yeah, we can take another question. Sure. Ken, how can we make your day better? Um, my wife suffers from cluster headaches. Yes. And they are constant all the time. And, um, they, they, they get worse at night. Uh-huh. So, okay. Couple have you got any, absolute, any recommendations? To, to absolutely. Suggestion? That was the last question I ever took on my national board to become a, a di diplomat in orthopedics. My last question was, what type of headache is this? And the answer was cluster headache. So I'm, I'm, I have affinity for cluster headache questions. What usually happens is it could be food-related, alcohol, caffeine, um, artificial sweeteners. That's a big one. Number one symptom of artificial sweeteners is, is headaches, and it could be cluster headaches. So any type of artificial sweetener, and it's in over 6,000 products, she's got to cut out all the artificial sweeteners. Number two, dehydration is a biggie. Number three, I'd cut out the caffeine. Okay, see if that helps it. And number four, which is the most common cause of the cluster headaches, is a pinched nerve in the neck. When the upper bones in the neck called the atlas move out of place, you pinch the nerve called the greater occipital nerve, and it wraps around the side of your head. And I know I used to get these for years until I got my neck adjusted chiropractically. When you had a pinched nerve in the neck, it created that cluster headache. So if that if it's ba starting at like the base of her skull or just off to the side and wrapping up in there, it's probably a pinched nerve as well. So I would try those things first, and let's see how we do. Okay, doctor. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure. Ever, ever so much. My pleasure, Kenneth. Thanks so much. Eh, I've played this game before once or twice. Um, so, folks, uh, if, if you're just tuning in, I am Dr. Joe Esposito, always on from 7 to 9 on uh, WSB. I'll be on tonight. 
Um, I want you to do me a favor. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. I've seen a lot of you uh, click in and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. We send out lots of good information. If you go to my website, you can sign up for my newsletter. Absolutely no charge. Uh, we send out lots of good information there as well. We never sell or give away your email address. Don't worry about that. Um, Supplement-wise, people always ask me. I got two questions on Facebook already on supplements since I've been here. Um, I'd rather you e- email me through my website. I'll gladly answer them on Facebook if you want me to. But if you email me through my website, it's just easier for me, drjoesposito.com. I recommend you take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. That's the minimum amount of nutrients that you need every single day. And they're on my website. They're also on Amazon. If you have an Amazon account, a bunch of other supplements on Amazon too. My books are on Amazon and my website. But at least start by giving your body the, the, the nutrients that you need to function the best you possibly can. So the website's there 24 hours a day. We archive radio shows there, uh, videos of live lectures that I've done, drjoesposito.com, or just uh, Google Dr. Joe, the number one Dr. Joe in the world. Folks, if you have a healthcare question, we're live, 404-872-0750 or 1-800-WSB-TALK. And if you have questions, you don't want to come on the air. I know some people do that. Just uh, send them to me through the website, and I'll gladly answer them for you. Uh, But folks, I am Dr. Joe Esposito. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. He can predict your health future by looking at your refrigerator. Learn what you should eat and what not to eat to get healthy. Dr. Joe Esposito is on. News 95.5 at AM 750 WSB. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. Glad you could be here. I'm also going to be here tonight from 7 to 9 on WSB, so make sure you tune in. That's my regularly scheduled time, and today's kind of special for us. All right, lots of callers. Let's go back to it. Gwen, how can we make your day better? Uh, Ten years ago, I was diagnosed with something akin to retinitis pigmentosa and told there was nothing that could be done for it, and so I had to just wait progressively until I go blind. Sure. I, I'm not that kind of person. I want to know something I can do. Okay. Well, I have macular degeneration, personally, so I can speak from personal experience here, just me and you talking right now, Gwen. Uh, I was diagnosed about f- six, seven years ago. I was told, same thing, nothing you can do about it. You're going to go blind. It is what it is. So I'm like you. I said, eh, 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 eh. So that's when I created Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source because my thought process was if you take zeaxanthin and lutein, which are two supplements they recommend for this, um, it's supposed to slow it down. I said, no, 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 I'm going to reverse this thing. So I created Super Greens and Essential Source, which is loaded with antioxidants. It's uh, 10 servings of raw fruits and vegetables, prebiotics, probiotics, alkalizing minerals. I take a scoop of that every day. I went back about two years later. My eye doctor took a picture of the back of my eye and started shaking. And I thought, I got a brain tumor. I'm going to die, you know. And he looks at me and he says, what are you doing? And I said, what do you mean? He says, this is getting better. It's about 50% better. He says, it never gets better. No one ever improves from macular degeneration. And I said, well, I'm doing super green central source. I explained the whole antioxidant, blah, blah, blah. He says, whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. So two years later, I go back again, get another check. He's got a, a, a young doctor in there, a woman doctor. She looks at it. She looks at all three eyes, eyes as progressively, and she says, I'm sorry, I have these backwards because she thought it was getting, you know, should be getting worse. And I said, no, you have it right. And she was blown away by it, and she even pr- suggested I go to a retina specialist, use me as an example. So can I promise you that it would help you? I have no idea. But I can tell you, it saved my vision. So I... I- can't see a computer. Do you have a phone number so I could call your office and order this? Sure. If you go to 844-44-DR-JOE. 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 Uh-huh. Uh, you can ask for Mary. She's she's my uh, my direct uh, personal assistant. Okay. And, um, now, again, it took me a while to see the results. It's not like you're going to take it in one day and go, hey, I can see again. Right. But it's the loaded amount of antioxidants that are just... That's why I recommend everybody take it for whatever reason, but that's why I started taking it, and it, it did wonders for my eyes. Hopefully, it'll help you, too. Well, I sure do appreciate it. Thank you My so pleasure, much. Gwen. Thanks so much. And uh, people ask me all the time, what supplement should I take, Dr. Joe? And I always say, at least start with Super Greens and Essential Source. They're two powders. They taste great. You can give them to kids. Uh, Kids love these things. You mix it up, maybe a frozen banana, make a little shake out of it. And that's the minimum amount of nutrients. And then when patients come in our office, or we can do it online if we need to or over the phone, we put together a nutrition protocol specifically based on your needs. And I have a whole line of supplements that I, I've created. Um, there are other supplements that I use from other companies as well that I don't have in my line. But I really want to get your body as healthy as possibly as we can. And then you need to take responsibility too. I recommend you eat a lot more fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds. Stay away from what I call the seven deadly sins of nutrition. Alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener. 
And under sugars, unfortunately, fall things like breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, and pastas. I know you don't want to hear that. But I ha- on my website, drjoesposito.com, uh, on my videos, I have a lecture I did called The Seven Deadly Sins of Nutrition. And all my, by the way, my website, the information there is no charge. We don't charge for the audio. We don't charge for the videos. If you have questions, you can send them to me. Uh, we really want to help you the best we possibly can. I have a team of doctors. We have three offices, Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. And we want to do everything we can from a chiropractic standpoint, from a structural standpoint. A lot of you may have acid reflux or heartburn. And many times what you need to do is actually massage or pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm and physically get the stomach to relax. And when it does, so many people, in fact, one of my coworkers, right before I went on the air, she grabbed me and said, Dr. Joe, my blood pressure is weird. I'm feeling weird. Checked her out. And I just worked on her stomach right before I came on the air. So it's really neat. When you understand if you have a normally functioning nervous system, normally functioning digestive system, and good nutrition, you're pretty amazed at what happens to your health. Now, I know a lot of you are holding on. Folks, keep holding on. But when I come back, I'm going to ask you to be really fast because we got a lot of callers on there. So I'll try to get to each one of your calls if I can. If I can't get to you, send them to me through the website, drjoesposito.com. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, again, we want to be your doctors. We want to do everything we can to help you out. So uh, don't go anywhere. Do me a favor. Tell your friends about the show. Tune in tonight from 7 to 9. I'll be back on, and I'm going to be right back. You'll ask yourself, why didn't I listen to him sooner? Dr. Joe Esposito on News 95.5 and AM 750 WSB. Hey, folks. I am Dr. Joe Esposito. You are correct. Thank you, uh, Jeff Davis there. And I'm usually on from 7 to 9 on Sunday nights, and I will be on tonight, 7 to 9 on Sunday night. So if you like what you're hearing now, uh, make sure you tune in. Tell your friends to tune in, too, because we are the fastest. We may be the number one health and wellness radio broadcast in the country, as far as I know we are. And it's all thanks to you. It's thanks to you, the listeners. Um, And if you want more information, follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram. If you have questions, I don't get you on the air today. Send them to me through the website. Uh, DrJoeEsposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. Got a lot more information, but I got a lot of callers, too. So let's take some callers. Joyce, how can we make your day better? Um, you can advise me on my upcoming total knee surgery. Okay. Well, I have a Baker's cyst on the back of my knee, and someone told me that even if my doctor drains it during surgery, it could come back. Do you know if that's true or not? Because that's the most painful thing right now. That, that like is correct, an yes. an inch by two and a half inches, well, my yeah. MRI says. Sure. Now, the Baker's cyst can come back because the Baker's cyst, if you can imagine what's happening, the body is laying down a cushion um, around an injury or, or something wrong, and so the body creates a cyst, you know, f- a sac to cover that area to protect it. So if we just drain it and we don't get to the cause of why you have the Baker's cyst, chances are it, it can come back. So what usually happens with Baker's cyst is after a patient has them operated on, and I'm no problem with the surgery, I check the nerves in the low back because the nerves in the low back can cause back pain, leg pain, hip pain, and knee pain. But if the low back's out of alignment, it can cause the knees to shift. Then we got to check the feet and the knees to see if they're out of alignment because that can cause everything to shift as well. So you got to kind of go top down and the bottom up to make sure everything's lined up properly. And in most cases, we get amazing results after the cyst is operated on to, to, to get the problem resolved. So. And go to a chiropractor to get everything straight? Well, that's the only person I know who can line up bones, yeah. Um, and we're right near you. So I would recommend, you know, if you want to, come see us and we'll see what we can do for you. But, you know, we always like to try to get to the cause of your health care problem, not just treat the symptoms. So the osteo... Yeah. Osteoarthritis is always mechanical. There's two types of arthritis. Okay. Well, gen- generally two types, rheumatoid and osteo. Rheumatoid is when the body attacks itself. It's an autoimmune condition. And with cases like that, I always get people off the foods that cause the most autoimmune reaction, which are wheat and dairy products to start, and then we work from there. Osteo is a mechanical problem. Something's out of alignment, and it's rubbing against the other bones and wearing out. So you want to realign everything you possibly can, even if you get the knee replaced, which may be necessary, but what caused the knee to wear out is always my question. And then we check everything to try to realign the whole body. 206 bones in the body, any one of them can come out of place. Right. So that would be my suggestion. Okay, Joyce? And your, and your biggest tip for a successful knee replacement? <laughs> I would get my body lined up before I go in for surgery and then get it lined up right after surgery. A lot of surgeons okay. send, send me their cases before and after and say, Joe, get them as healthy as you can going into the surgery. I'll do the surgery, and then you get them as healthy as you can as they come out of the surgery. And that happens all the time in our offices. All right, I'll do that. Thanks, Joyce. I appreciate, appreciate it. your my, help. My pleasure. Thanks so much. 
Eh, let's keep taking calls. Conrad, how can we make your day better? Hey, Dr. Joe, uh, I'm 26, and I'm chronically tired. Okay. All the time. Um, I, even if I get, like, 10 hours of sleep, if I don't get, you know, a 20-ounce a cup of coffee from Starbucks every day, it's like I just... Wow. I don't feel, <laughs> I don't feel myself. You I know understand. what I mean? Sure. What usually happens with those cases, Conrad, and, and I always joke in my lectures, how many people have fatigue? How many people are too tired to raise their hand? You know, so, and that's how you feel, right? I'm just too tired to even tell you I'm tired. Yeah. What I find most likely, it, it could be several organ issues, and the first organ I always check in my offices is the adrenal glands. Because the adrenal glands produce adrenaline, which gives you energy. They also produce, ultimately, testosterone, just like the testicles. And testosterone will give you energy, build muscle mass. And then it also can affect some uh, inflammation in your body as well. So the adrenal glands are the organs we always check. And coffee will give you short-term burst of energy, but burn out the adrenal glands. So you're kind of in a catch-22. Um, I've got a supplement I've created. It's, I call it Dr. Joe's Optimal Adrenal Support. And it helps with energy levels. It helps the body deal with stress. It helps your cortisol levels, which is a stress hormone that's produced. Uh, and that's on my website, drjoesposito.com, and I take that one every day. It's Dr. Joe's Optimal Adrenal Support. Hey, wh what's it called again? Dr. Just Joe's Optimal Adrenal Support. Optimal Adrenal Support, okay. Yeah. And that's on the website. And again, I'm substantially older than you, but I run circles around my 20-year-old employees, and they're like, how do you do this? Um, I keep my adrenal glands healthy. And also, you got to drink more water, Conrad. you got to hydrate your system. And well, and th that's what I meant to ask you because uh, that was the first thing I started doing. I, I usually drink um, a, a, a close to a gallon, if not a gallon of water every day. Oh, that's great. And, and it's still, uh, I'm still tired, though, so I didn't know yeah. if, you know. Okay, well, that may not be one else. of your big issues then. Obviously, it's not. Um, and then if that doesn't work with the adrenals, do you have bags under your eyes, by the way? Uh, no, not okay, right now. Well, you're pretty young. As you get older, you start getting bags under the eyes with adrenal issues. Then we want to look at your thyroid as well. And we can test those in our office. We can t test, uh, see what's going on to see what your deficiencies are. But adrenals is my first check, and then thyroid is my second check. Yeah, I'm gonna. you guys got an office in Duluth, right? We do, yep. Mm -hmm. I'm going to set up an appointment because I want to get this fixed for yeah. uh, 2018. Yeah, just come in and get it fixed. It's, it's very, I always say that there will come a time in our lifetime, certainly your lifetime, where holistic health is just the way to go. In fact, Emory University just called me. They, they want to have me on one of their podcasts and consult with me. They're going to set up a wellness center. So it's catching on. This Finally, people are yeah. getting it. Wait, this is inexpensive and it works with very few side effects? Why wouldn't I do this? And that's what's kind yeah. of cool. Yeah. So, well, we look forward to seeing you, Conrad. Well, thank you, doctor. My pleasure. Thanks so much. It is exciting. I think it's next month I'm going to meet with Emory. They want to have me on one of their podcasts. Now, it's funny because years ago, a chiropractor at Emory University, no, and I've spoken at the nutrition department at Emory already. Um, one of the doctors jokingly asked me if I would teach endocrinology there. Um, and I said, you want to, I, I, I'm again, I'm a chiropractor. I said, you want a backcracker teaching your students? And she said, no, we'd really like you teaching our doctors because you explain things so clearly. So it's kind of cool where we're starting to come together in the healthcare professions and we don't have those biases, those silly biases, that now the patients are starting to benefit. So I predict, and I've never been wrong in my healthcare predictions, you're gonna see a major change in healthcare and it's really changing the, the healthcare model. Shows like this, and hopefully this show is the leader, uh, on the way people think about healthcare. Let's get the nervous system working properly. If you have acid reflux or heartburn, I can give you a, a half hour lecture on that alone. You're not digesting your food properly. And so many times you have to manually pull or adjust the stomach down away from the diaphragm, and the body starts to heal. And you start absorbing your nutrients, and the brain starts working better, and the brain fog goes away, and the anger. And it's just really cool when the body's healthy. And then we get them on supplements like Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, other supplements. You may need other ones. Eat the right foods. Stay away from the bad foods. Have more raw food in your diet, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, broccoli, cucumbers, avocados. I know years ago you, you were a tree hugger or airy-fairy, and now it's mainstream, which is really kind of cool. So I'm excited. I, it's fun to be part of this, the, the thing that made the changes over the years. Chuck, how can we make your day better? Hey, good afternoon, Joe. Thanks for taking my phone call. My pleasure. My daughter is 15, and uh -huh. the last six months, she's had some episodes where her lip has started to puff out. Um, yep. And we, had to, we went to the doctor, and they had an allergy report. They said she was allergic to seafood mm -hmm. and whey and uh, different things. And uh, one night, I brought her home a, pop, uh, a pizza, and immediately after that, she had a, she had a reaction. Sure. Well, yes, yes, last night, she had another reaction, but she didn't eat, eat any of the types of meats that they were talking about. 
Um, anything that you can maybe tell us to kind of look at? I mean, <laughs> I've asked about makeup, makeup remover. Sure. I've talked mm-hmm. about everything. Yep. I had this happen when I was a kid. And my lip would st- – and there's a picture of, of me as a, a child, probably around her age, and my lip was so swollen that it covered up my nostrils. And I got a big nose. I'm Italian. So it covered up my nostrils. That's how big my lip was. And then my eye would swell up sometimes and couldn't figure out a pattern. Finally, I figured my issue, and I don't know if it's her issue, deodorant soap. Whenever I came in contact with a scented deodorant soap, I can't use brand names on the air, of course, my, I, if I touch my eye or my lip, I'd swell up. And I said, there you go. So her, her immune system is very sensitive. That's what's happening because you shouldn't have a reaction to deodorant soap. But you got to start thinking about other things, and I appreciate what you're doing, Chuck, as a father. Um, is it makeup? Is it makeup remover? Is it uh, um, dryer sheets? You might want to consider dryer sheets. Anything that has an artificial smell to it, uh, the plug-in air fresheners, um, ca- new car smell, anything that's going to have an artificial chemical smell to it could be causing these problems. Excellent. So, well, thanks, Dr. Joe. Hey, hey, I'm so glad you're open up at Stockbridge. I'm the guy I talked to you several years ago and asked you about it, and I'm glad you did. You were part of our motivation, Chuck, so I appreciate that. Thanks so much. <laughs> yeah, have a good weekend. All right, my friend. Thanks so much. Folks, if you have a healthcare question, 844 uh, – oh, no, that, that, that's my phone number. That's right, 844 Dr. Joe is my office if you need to make an appointment or if we don't get you on the air. If you have a question here, we still have about 15 more minutes, 404 872 And if not, i got plenty of content here. i got plenty of stuff to talk about. Dan, how can we make your day better? Yes, Dr. Joe. Uh, concerning vitamins and minerals, I've heard, you know, that it's better to purchase the brand name items as support as a support as opposed to the store brand. What's your recommendation? It depends, because there are some brand name ones that aren't very good actually, and there are some store brand ones that are. You want I always try to get my supplements from a non synthetic source. So number one, it has to be non synthetic. And synthetic means it's made in a laboratory. And then you also want to make sure you try to do whole food supplements. Now, when I say whole food, not the store, but as little processing as possible, like Dr. Joe's Essential Source and Dr. Joe's Super Greens, with the Essential Source, we juice fruits and vegetables, take the water out and the sugar out at a very low temperature so the enzymes aren't destroyed. And then we add prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes. And so you got plenty of uh, good nutrients there because it's a high quality product. And usually, and this is interesting, there was a study done a while ago. I remember reading about this. They did a study on all these supplements and what's better. And and one thing they found was the cheaper the supplement, the less likely it was to be effective. So quality products are pretty important. My grandfather was a German immigrant, came over in 1922. And he taught me, he said, Joseph, always buy the best. It's always cheaper. And boy, is he right. And it's really right when it comes to supplements. So, Okay. Well, anyway, I I am on your uh, essential source. And the other one now you uh-huh. mentioned? Yes. Super and greasy. anyway, it's doing very well. And uh, I really appreciate it. And I've been using it over a year now. I uh, saw my doctor, and he said everything is fine. Wow. I see that, Dan. I thank you for that, that testimonial. I appreciate that. Keep taking the supplements. Thank you, sir. All right, my friend. Got to go to break. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. My website, if you want to order supplements, if you want to listen to archive radio shows, videos, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, Don't go anywhere. I'm going to have to go to a break. And do me a favor. At the break, tell your friends about the show. I'll be back on again on WSB 7 to 9 tonight. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Are you suffering needlessly? Dr. Joe can give you advice on how to naturally get well and stay well. Dr. Joe Esposito on WSB. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. I know, not my usual time. I'm going to be on 7 to 9 tonight. So uh, if you're on hold with a question, if I don't get to you because it's a short segment, either send me your question through the uh, website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. That'll bring you right up to the Health Plus Wellness Center website. That's me. Uh, Or call back tonight between 7 and 9 because I do want to answer your questions. I just may not have time to answer everybody. John, how can we make your day better? Well, sir, um, I'll get right to it. I have this whooshing, shocking feeling that hits me right in the head when I come home in the afternoons and I lay down for a nap or when I'm sleeping at night, I wake up with a start, um, this incredible whooshing yes. feeling to my head that yep. it really is scary when it happens. Understood. And I'm, uh, I had a, uh, my general doctor kind of laughs at me, but I had a, a cardiac doctor that I went to for this 
He said, that's your vagus nerve. He's correct. And, I mean, he said it quick as a wink. So yep. I, I haven't uh, been able to find a lot of good information about what to do about it. Sure. Do you have any acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating? I am the poster child of all of those There you things. go. The vagus nerve comes out of your skull, goes down and controls your stomach and your whole digestive system. So when, uh, when you have the acid reflux, the heartburn, the stomach is usually pushed up into your diaphragm. And what we do in our offices, we massage or pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm to get it to physically release, like a massage almost. And when that happens, we can take the stress off the vagus nerve. And that may be the reason. That's why I knew what you were going to tell me before you told me. Um, and so many people have acid reflux and heartburn. It's the number two reason we see patients. Number one is back pain and neck pain. Again, we're chiropractors. And number two is acid reflux and heartburn. So we check the nerve supply from the spine that goes to the digestive system. Because as chiropractors, we always go to the spine to check everything first. Then we may actually have to adjust your stomach, pull it down away from the diaphragm. And when the stomach relaxes, hopefully you're not going to get that. And the reason I know about that is I had that for years. I was a mess. I, I tell you, the reason I know so much is I was a mess all my life. <laughs> and when I finally realized how to fix it, I got my doctors working with me. It was just amazing. So if you want to make an appointment, you have an office not far from you. Will do. I appreciate it. Great, John. I appreciate you got it. got your work cut out for you. I'm ready for you. Yeah, folks, uh, if you're on hold, please keep holding. Uh, I'll, I'll try to pick you up. If not, send you questions through the website, drjoesposito.com. If you want to make appointments, order Super Greens, Essential Source, other supplements, we want to be your doctor. Hey, I'm going to be back tonight from 7 to 9 on WSB, so set your clock. Tell your friends about the show, and uh, you'll tune in there as well. Hey, thanks for listening, and we'll catch you tonight at 7 o'clock. <laughs>